In this video, we're going to talk about how to respawn the player so that if we hit the tab button, we'll hop back at the beginning, right? So we can pick up some collectibles. And if we hop back at the beginning, we still hold on to our collectibles and we can keep going. All right, next we're going to do a respawn for the player. Now we just did our reload level, right? And you can see that if I collect some things and I reload the level, it all goes back to zero. But what I want with a respawn as I want to keep everything exactly how it is, I just want to destroy the current player and spawn a new one back from my original spawn position. Meaning that if I pick up a couple of these, that I'll still have those, I'll just pop back to my, my little spawn point back here. That's what I want, and that's how I'm defining the difference between respawn and reload. Now I want to show you something. Inside of Unreal's documentation, they actually have some terminology that can be a little bit confusing. Sometimes they will use the word restart, which they're using similar to how we're using respawn. But if you also see, if I type in respawn player Unreal into Google, one of the first things is from Unreal documentation and they talk about respawning the player. So I scroll up to the top, respawning a player, and then sometimes they'll use the restart player somewhere in here. It just gets a little bit confusing. So just know that if you start looking at the existing nodes inside of Unreal, it's not always consistent and I'm just gonna use my terminology. And if you needed to do a custom respawning system, you totally could. You don't have to use the nodes that they're using. So I'm gonna bring back our little graph over here. Um, what I want to do is I want to have our player controller listen to a new input action that we're gonna use for respawning. I'm gonna use tab. It's going to tell our game mode that we want to respawn. And we're also going to hold on to our spawn point inside of our player state. So the game mode is going to grab the spawn point, which we're going to set when the ball spawns in on begin play. We're gonna set our current spawn point our game mode is going to request that whenever the player controller tells us, and we're going to spawn a new one, possess it at the spawn point. So that's the general flow of what we're gonna to try to do here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a new input action. I'm going to come over here, uh, go to input, input action. This one we want IA underscore respawn. Okay, anytime I make a new asset, I like to save it. So let's save that, open it up. This one for the triggers, we're also gonna do a pressed, just like that, save that. We also need to go to our ball game, not our ball, our ball game. With our reload level, we're gonna add a new mapping. So a little plus over there. We're gonna add our IA underscore respawn. So with our respawn action, let's go into here and let's assign a keyboard press to it. I'm gonna type in tab and it should be under keyboard. Great, okay, so just select tab there and hit save. So now as usual, it's always good to test to make sure your input is working. So I'm gonna go back into my player controller. Right after our reload level, I'm going to type in IA underscore, we're gonna see respawn is one of the options here so if it listens for us to press the tab key then i'm going to pull off and type print string we're going to type in respawn just make sure that we get this printing to the console during play mode let's compile save minimize come over here hit play and then press tab okay respawn great so we know that that's working and now we can add the functionality so we know that we need to hold on to a certain spawn point and we may start thinking of where should we put that now you might consider the game mode but the problem is with the game mode what if we have multiple players the game mode probably shouldn't handle each player's own personal spawn point that might be something that they need to handle just depending on your your game type for me i think the player should be responsible for keeping track of the spawn point and so then we think, well, if it's the player, is it the pawn or is it the player controller? Now, it's possible the ball pawn could hold on to its own spawn point, but if the ball is destroyed, then, you know, the player controller doesn't know where to spawn the thing. So then we think maybe it should exist in the player controller. But then my argument here would be, we don't want to give the player controller everything. If it's just data related to the player, we might want to use the player state which is kind of like all the information that the player needs, but isn't inside the player controller, like all the variables and things. So we're gonna put that in the player state. We have already made this in an earlier tutorial, our, our ball player state. So if we open this up, we have our collectible count. Well, I'm just gonna add down here under variables, our spawn point. So we'll type in spawn point, and this is going to be a type of transform. Now you could do a vector and just save the X, Y, Z position. I'm gonna use a transform in case we also want to save our rotation. 
I don't really think that'll matter, but I've seen it done either way. I'm just gonna use transform just in case and we will compile and save. So this is inside the ball player state. So this is important to remember whenever we try to use it again later. So now we need to save our spawn point at some point during the game. So if we're talking about how to save the spawn point or where to put that, there's a couple places I could look at. I could look at the player controller on begin play. I think that would make sense. I might think about the ball pawn, but then if I had other kinds of pawns, I would have to you know, save the start position across all of them. So for me, I'm, I'm kind of undecided between the player controller and the player state. Uh, since I already have a lot of things in the player controller, I'll just show you that you can put it in the player state. Um, we could do the begin play and just do it here. So I'm gonna do it here just to separate out things a little bit. We could always change it later if we want. So inside of my player state first, when we begin play, we're going to get the player pawn because we want the player pawn's position. So this is gonna be our ball pawn. And we're gonna pull off of that. We need to get the player pawn's transform but we need to get the actor transform. So you see get actor transform, and this is what we're gonna save. So we're gonna pull off of that and type set spawn point, just like that. So we're going to access this spawn point variable down here, and we're going to change it to our player pawns position. So basically, whenever our level starts, our player state is created, begin play, we're just gonna look for the ball pawn and get that as the respawn position. Compile, save. Okay, now that we have our spawn point hopefully tracking correctly, let's go to our game mode and go to our functions. We're gonna make another function for respawning the player. So I'm going to hit the plus button inside of my ball game mode and type respawn player. Now inside of this function, let's consider what we need to do. I think the first thing we should do is if we're gonna respawn the player, we don't know if the player controller is currently controlling a ball or not. Like maybe the ball was destroyed and we still wanna be able to respawn it. So what I wanna do is get my player controller and we're gonna test to see if it's controlling anything. Um, and also this may be optional. This is just like something that I wanted to do to in case I wanted to make this a more custom thing later. Uh, so we can pull off of that and say, get controlled on something kind of handy is if you ever pull off of a node, you can see what it has access to, um, which is what it did with get controlled pawn. And we want to test and see if it is valid. So if it is, then we're controlling something. If it's not, then we don't have anything. I'm going to type in is valid. And I'm looking for the function, not the question mark right here. And I'm going to pull off of this and do a branch and I'm going to uh, type in branch. So. This is basically saying if my player controller is controlling something, if it is, then I want to destroy that thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off of the controlled pawn because if it is valid, I want to destroy actor like that. And what's really important here is if this returns true, that means I am controlling something. So I'm going to pull off of true and I'm going to destroy it. But if I'm not controlling anything, then I'm good and I'm going to continue over here. So what I need to do at this point is I need to get access to the player state so that we have a spawn point, and then I'm going to respawn the player at a certain position. So let me show you something. If I were to right click and type restart player at transform, you see that we have a couple different nodes here. I mentioned earlier that Unreal can get a little bit confusing with this terminology. Restart player at transform, you can read up more about it, but it will attempt to spawn the player pawn at a certain location. So we need to give it a location, we need to give it the character controller, and we need to give it the game mode, but because we're already inside of the game mode, we can leave that for self right there. This would only work if we were inside the game mode, otherwise we need to plug it in. Okay, so for our new player, we wanna get our player controller. So it's pretty simple, we'll just type in get player controller and we will plug that in to new player. Now for the spawn transform, that's a little trickier. Remember, we need to get access to the player state. So I'm gonna type in player state, get player state, and we need to cast to the specific ball player state that we've been using. So I'm going to pull off cast to ball player state. Okay, so this should have all the variables that we've been using. Pull that up here, just pull some of this over. And what we need to do is from this, from the ball player state, we need to get our spawn point. Remember, it's inside of the ball player state that we set earlier, that variable over here, right there. And from the spawn point, this is going to be where we want to spawn it. Pull that up a little bit. And so we're gonna connect this over here. So after our cast, we're going to restart player transform or it will attempt to pull some of this over. All right, and 
the other tricky thing right here is after we destroy our actor, like if we're controlling something and we destroy it, then we still want to do all this stuff, right? But if we're false, if we're not controlling anything, then we still want to do all this stuff, but not just the destroy actor part. So this is a little bit confusing, but make sure you get these connected correctly. If we're not controlling anything, we want to cast. If we are, we want to destroy it, and then we want to cast. So I think this will do it. Compile, save. One important thing to mention here is that if we try to spawn something inside of a wall or a collision, it's just not going to do anything. Like, it's not going to spawn. So this shouldn't be a problem since we're saving our spawn point as whatever our ball pawn is starting at. So if we're seeing it, it should work. But later on, if we add uh, checkpoints or something, then uh, we need to make sure that our checkpoints don't have the position all weird. So anyway, just a, a weird thing about this node. And the last thing I want to mention is um, this is a node that Unreal uses that does a lot of things for us. It is trying to spawn our predefined pawn at a location and then possesses it with the player controller. It's a lot of things. We could do all that ourselves. It's just kind of handy that we can do all of it with one node. And again, um, I haven't tested it. This might even handle the destroying for us. I don't know. Uh, I kind of started off trying to do the custom way and then discovered that there was a node to do it. So I, I kind of switched mid, but uh, it seems to work for me. So I'm going to compile. I'm going to save. OK, so the last thing we need to do is we need to come back over to our player controller. We were leaving this, this placeholder for us right here, this respawn. Uh, we need to actually call it from the game mode, right? So I'm going to delete that. We created our respawn player and it does all our functionality for us, but we actually need to call that over when we press the key. We're going to right click and type git game mode, just like we did up here. I mean, you can just copy paste this, it's probably faster. So we'll just do that. Pull that in as ball game mode, we're going to respawn players. So I hope you're starting to see a pattern on how we're organizing and accessing things. There's definitely better ways to do it long term, like we could look into interfaces and event dispatchers, but I didn't want to get too complex too quickly. I just wanted to get you into the pattern of putting functions and the different parts of our gameplay framework and then accessing them. And then later on, those other patterns will make more sense once you get the basics down. So compile, save. So we are casting to our game mode, double click, respawn our player, do all of this. This should be correct. Our player state is setting our, our spawn point when our game begins. So I think this will do it. Let's save it and press play. I'm gonna get a collectible, get one, hit backspace. Okay, that's gonna reload our level. Let's try it again, but I'm gonna hit tab now. See how it respawns and I keep my, my third one. So that's the big difference between respawn and reload. Um, it can be helpful to just reset a player at a nearby position without, you know, reloading all the data and stuff. And both have their uses, but it's kind of nice to have a reload and a respawn. And we're accessing those from the game mode. And I think this is the way that we want to set it up.